um, graduated high school, went to college thinking that I was pre-med, going to go to medical school and be a physician. Um, and then towards the end of college, I realized I was introduced to the PA profession and I, it really appealed to me for obvious reasons. So um, the problem was I had taken all pre-med prerequisites. So after graduation, I had to take a bunch of community college classes make up for that and then get patient care experience as a medical scribe. So I had two years of experience as a scribe, applied to Wake and somehow got in. And um, yeah, and I've been practicing for seven months, eight months. Yeah, it's going really well. Awesome. And so you and I both edit personal statements yes. with my PA resource. So I don't mm -hmm. even know how long I've been doing that now. I guess I've been doing the PA platform almost five years so I've probably been editing about that long I don't know how many essays I've read it's a lot That's so crazy, especially because when I first started my account I first started following yours like yeah. yours was the first that I began to follow well so. I think we started our accounts around the same time and I don't know how y'all did it while you're in school like there's no way I could have kept up an account while I was in school I I, I don't really know <laughs> Well, I don't know how I do things now with a child either. So it, we just make things happen. It's fine. All right. Yeah. So we, I guess we decided to do this because you had posted in your stories on Instagram about like wanting to talk about the mistakes people make in their personal statements, which is also yes. something I like to talk about a lot because there's a lot of mistakes and there's a lot of good. Like, I mean, I recently had an essay that I read that I actually, um, emailed back to my PA resource and I said this essay is so good I don't have anything bad to say it was amazing and I like that rarely rarely happens but I mean good essays happen but a lot of times we see the same mistakes over and over on the opposite um, end I have yeah. there have been essays that I have sent back where I cross out like 75 percent of it and I'm like I'm so sorry to do this to you, but this is why I'm doing this. And like, we've just got to rework this. Yeah. I feel really, I feel bad sometimes when I send them back to you and I warn people and like, listen, if you request me, there's gonna be a lot of red and it's not all bad. Like I put in good comments too. It's not all bad, but there's gonna be a lot of red, a lot of suggestions. You don't always have to, you know, agree with what I recommend, but there's probably going to be a lot of, <laughs> I don't want you to feel like your essay's bad, but there's going to be a lot of critique in there. I'll do the same thing. So. I'll stop, I'll stop like every sentence or two and just give my feedback, like right. what I'm thinking, what's going through my head. So yes. it's not all bad. I'm sure people see that and they're like, oh my yeah. God, I'm being torn apart, but it's really not It's bad. not all bad. But, but I mentioned it on my story because when I started editing them, um, back in July, right after I graduated. So this is the first real peak season I've ever hit. Yeah. And, and doing multiple essays a day for so many weeks, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many themes that could easily be addressed if people just knew what to focus on. Right. And that's why a, lot, a little bit of prep can make a huge difference. And writing, writing your personal statement's hard. Like it's hard to get started. It's hard to know if you're doing it right. You're never going to feel like it's good enough. And even if, you know, we edit it, even if every person you know edited it, you're still going to feel like you can make changes and do things. So eventually you just have to be good with it. And, like, that's what, I mean, sometimes people email back, like, oh, I've edited my essay, but I still don't know. But, like, you have to have some confidence in it, too, especially if other people tell you it's strong and that you've yeah. done a good job. Um, but, yeah, you work on it forever. I think a couple weeks ago, someone I had in the fall, I had done an advanced revision. So they'd sent it in three times and we finally perfected it. I said, you've done a great job. You've incorporated my recommendations beautifully. And then now that peak season has hit, they sent it in again with it totally reworked. And I was like, hey, what happened? Like it was great to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. That happens to me sometimes on like the, so the advanced revision is when you do three. So you get your essay edited three times. So like sometimes the third one will come back and I thought we were like on the right track and then it's completely different. Um, and so I had one of those recently that I think I made a note about a mistake that I saw. I'm actually going to add that so I don't forget to talk about it. Um, but yeah, so I, I love editing. I love interviews, of course, too, because that's what I do a lot of. But like, I love editing and I've always loved like writing and stuff. So 
It's really fun getting to read, read all the essays. Um, it can be overwhelming, but I always remember that when I'm going through a personal statement, I'm not just editing it, but I get to see the behind the scenes of these people's stories and right. like figure out what drew, drew them to the PA profession and what experiences they've had. I get to read some really cool stories. Yeah, I mean, you do too. me too. And that's why I love the ones that I get to the end. I'm like, oh man, like I want to be their classmate. Like that, this I person know. sounds so cool. Like I want to know you and be your PA friend. Um, yeah, so... All right, let's get into our mistakes. So the way we did this was Lori and I both made lists of our top mistakes. And I didn't rank mine. I just, like, listed them. But we're going to see how many of ours are the same and kind of go back and forth with these and try to give you all some insights into things to look out for in your essay and maybe try not to do. Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. I'll start. These are in no particular order, of course, but I'll start with one that's kind of general that I see probably in every single essay that I get. And that is um, applicants tend to hyper focus on just the compassionate nature of PAs. They'll, you know, they'll shadow a PA for the first time and they'll be like, oh my gosh, the, they were so compassionate with patients. They took the time to listen. And that is not wrong by any means, but that's the theme of their essay and they don't touch on anything else. And I think um, applicants would be surprised to know how a lot of people apply and they don't really understand what a PA is or does. So instead of hyper focusing on PAs being compassionate, broaden it a little bit and go over what you understand to be their responsibilities and their scope of practice. And especially compare and contrast them if you've seen different specialties, um, just to show that you have a general understanding of what PAs do yes. besides connect with patients. Yeah, totally agree. I um, That's one of the main points I look for is like an understanding of the PA profession and more, mm-hmm. more than just, um, well, I'll get to my mistake in a minute, but like I kind of there's a couple ways I think about it like I think a lot of being compassionate caring for people that's a personality thing and you can do that in a lot of different medical professions so if you can sub in a different medical profession in your essay and it doesn't change it and you could use it for med school or nursing school it's probably not specific enough um, to showing that you really understand the PA profession and so Mm -hmm. my my I'll say my first mistake is telling instead of showing and so uh, to give an example of this like a lot of people say like I shadowed a PA and it was great I know about the profession now and so like it's great that you just told me that you did that but but that doesn't show me that you really understand it what would show me is saying I shadowed Laura and watched as she interacted with the patient independently and went through an entire physical exam collaborated with her her physician on which medication would be best because of some contraindications and went back to the patient with a great treatment plan and made her feel comfortable about it that shows me compassion that shows me what a PA does and it shows me the teamwork aspect of being a PA so yeah those those just kind of statements in your essay don't do anything except for waste characters to be honest I say the same thing. I don't say, I say things like you can say what all day long. You can say compassion. You can say collaborative. You can say teamwork, whatever you want to describe it, but you have to prove it. You have to show how or why. Um, It's so true. Gosh, I probably say that in every single essay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's see what my next one is. Um, Yeah, this, that kind of applies to the next one which was, I wrote down as just listing extracurriculars or clinical experience and saying, I was a scribe and I wrote charts and I did this and then leaving it at that. And it's like, I want you to dive deep into that. Tell me what characteristics you learned and how, like not just teamwork, but like, how did you learn teamwork and show me that you're almost a mini PA already. Like you've already started fostering these skills. Yes, yeah, same with listing. I read one today that um, was a supplemental application, but it was listing strengths. And they listed out like six strengths, like teamwork, compassion, great work ethic, all these things. And, and uh, you get lost in a list. Like, 
a right. list doesn't really do much, but if you can show those things and how you kind of have them, that's way more effective. And then like you were saying with listing your responsibilities, that's all on your application. If it's on your application, you don't need to relist it or, or just kind yeah. of reiterate it there. You can expand on it. You can talk more about those lessons. You can show what you learned, um, of course, because that's part of your story. But you don't need to just tell me again, I take vitals and chart yeah. for the patient. Yeah. That way space. <laughs> already know that. Um, yeah. I mean, this is really your only place in the application to expand on what you learned. And, and they're not wrong in listing all in, in addressing those because it's important to show that they're, you know, they learn teamwork and flexibility or adaptability, whatever they want to show, but they have to prove it because anyone can list all of those out and just leave it at that. But it's not very convincing to me as a reader. Exactly. I no. totally agree. Yes. I agree with you too. Is it my turn? Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Let's talk for a second about what do I want to call these red flag topics, maybe. Okay. Um, and this comes from one I was reading today, actually. Things that just like keep in mind that you're writing a formal essay and there are things that should not be included. So um, one of those things is cussing. And like, it's amazing that I say that I have to say that. Yeah. Um, I can't say I've ever edited an essay that I've had that. a couple and it's always a quote, like a quote from a patient. Um, but like still not appropriate. Like no. even if a patient, like obviously we get cussed at by patients and they say they have no filter sometimes, but, um, there's, there's just no place for that in your essay. So no. there's that. Um, and then like political views, or like very strong opinions about something, just keep in mind that you don't know who's reading your essay and they may have different views than you. And so um, I, I don't, I don't want to say like, don't share who you are and your opinion, but just be cautious about it. Maybe be a little bit more general. Um, like you can, you can talk about religious things. Just don't make it seem like, I don't know, there's only one way or put anyone down. Like, I mean, I definitely talked about like ministry things I did in my essay, but there's, there's just a way to do it correctly. And there's a way to do it. That's going to get you, your reader to shut down and not want to read your essay. So just be cautious with deciding to broach some of those topics. I would agree. I write that all the time that, that just to remind them that this is a professional portrait of them and they're, you can have those values you can be christian or or believe certain political views and that's fine but there's a time and place for all of that and it's not necessarily going to sell your application anymore by including it in your personal right statement. my my kind of rule of thumb is if like and i write this in so many essays um does it relate to the prompt of why you became a pa like if it's something that's directly related to your journey to becoming a pa include it if it's not, and it's just something you wanted to share, save it for if there's an appropriate supplemental or an interview, um, or really evaluate why you're wanting to share that particular yeah. thing. So, yeah. And kind of along that same line of just not including certain things, I try to keep it very, I encourage them to just keep it professional and not ask a bunch of rhetorical questions. I tend to discourage mm -hmm. those a lot because it doesn't add any value to your essay really and no one's gonna answer you. <laughs> um, dialogue, I try, I encourage people to keep to a minimum, maybe a phrase once or twice, but it can just look awkward. Yeah, it's very rarely done well. Like yes, every once in a while somebody can do it and I'm like, oh yeah, that works. But most of the time when that, when dialogue's in there, when quotes are in there, it just doesn't, it just feels choppy and doesn't really, yeah. the flow doesn't work. Yeah, it's very important to just keep a professional lens when writing your essay. I would agree with that. Um, my turn? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is, so one of the things that bugs me sometimes, because again, this is the only place in your application that you can do this, is that people will have this beautiful introduction that really engages me and tells me a little bit about them, them but then they dive right into their clinical experiences and saying, um, I was EMT and I love this and this and this, but I really like even just briefly if applicants can touch on what drew them to medicine initially or what drew them to the PA profession initially, because otherwise I feel like I'm just kind of 
dropped right in the middle of their journey. Do you know what I mean? Yep. I look for those two things too. Like those are two of my main points. Yeah. And, um, if they can touch on those, it makes it really easy to tell your story from there. Like you were exposed to the VA profession. It really appealed to you. And then tell me what you did to learn more about it, like shadowing or getting a job and then kind of go from there. It sets a really nice starting point. Um, and you can't really tell admissions committees that elsewhere. Like you can't tell them how you became interested in the PA profession through your CASPA. So I like it when they address that. Yeah. I had that on mine too. Like like having a flow, like a chronological flow. Um, And that's something I'll write in there a lot is like, help me to see and understand your decision-making process. Like what are those pivotal moments in your journey that have gotten you to this point? I want to understand those. It can be hard looking at, I mean, a CASP application is usually 25 to 30 pages and trying to see the timeline of all those experiences and classes, like it's really hard. And so you're right, this is the only place where you can actually explain that. And I tell people, you know, if you were taking classes and working and volunteering, like tell me that because I can't really tell, I'm not gonna go sift through your application and try to figure out when everything was occurring. I'm just checking the boxes to make sure you've done it. Exactly. It just helps with the flow of things so that I'm following along. and. When there's a better flow like that, when you're taking me through chronologically and kind of putting the pieces together for me, it allows me to focus on the content of the essay more instead of like jumping from one place to another, trying to follow along. Yep. So it just makes an essay stronger. And we don't need details. We don't need like, oh, in the summer of my sophomore year, I volunteered here. I just need a general idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. That leads to my next one, um, which is a hard one to explain. So being not specific specific enough versus too specific um there's a sweet spot of like you said like and and sometimes I'll make a recommendation like hey it'd be great if you could incorporate something talking about your academic success to like show me you're ready to be a PA student and people will feel like that means it needs to be a whole entire paragraph when a lot of times a sentence or two is sufficient um yeah And on the flip side, someone will have this story that is so elaborate and long that it takes up half of their essay without really telling me anything. Mm -hmm. And that's too specific. And so you really have to, I I write all the time, like be direct and concise, like get to the point as quickly as possible. Um, I don't need anything extra as far as descriptions Mm -hmm. or stuff, like just get to the point. Don't be redundant, be as efficient as you can. And if they don't understand what that means, I clarify it by saying, try to write by using as few words as possible and see what that does for you. And it tends to work for a lot of people, but you're right, these detailed stories that can be boiled down to just like two to three sentences, that's really all you need. Yes. Um, And I think one good reminder is that admissions committees are reading thousands of essays every cycle. And so the details are great and they make for a great story, but um, leave that to like an introduction when you're telling a story. If you're in the body of your essay, you need to get to the point and, and just leave it at that. Because that's really what the admissions committees want. They yeah, want you make to- it easy on them. Like make it easy for them to kind of figure out what, what they need to know. <laughs> Yeah, that's so good. You're like putting all of these um, these mistakes into words that I've never really thought of before. Like the balance of being too specific but not specific enough. It's so true. It's crazy. Um, you said something about being ready to be a PA student. So I wanted to touch on this one that I had. And that is um, failing to include what they're dissatisfied with in their current position and why they're ready to expand their scope of practice. That's a that good one. Sense. Yeah. Because Um, it's great to paint their clinical experiences like an MA or a CNA in a a great light and they love it, but I need to know what you're missing that you want to be able to do as a PA because it shows like this is, I've identified my boundary, I'm ready to go past it, I'm ready for PA school. Yeah, that goes back to our very first one because, um, I mean, you can be a CNA or an EMT and be, com- be giving compassionate care. So mm-hmm. if that's your reason for wanting to be in medicine, you're going to have to expand on that and answer that question of why you're not satisfied in that role. Because, yeah. I mean, you're, you're doing what you said you wanted to do. So yeah. why are you moving forward? Um, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, let me look at my list. So this one's very simple to me, and it encompasses a few things, but I am like a grammar police. 
So, like, like please just do spell check would be great before you submit. Um, and also, like, I've read essays that just don't use commas ever. Like, not a single comma. And I understand that maybe some people don't, like, understand grammar stuff, which is fine. And, like, I'm not perfect. I don't. I probably need a refresher, too. But, like, if you're unsure, just Google it. I mean, I've literally Googled exact phrases in an essay to figure out where a comma needs to go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, if you're not sure, like, put in some effort to try to make sure your, like, punctuation's correct, capitalizing things. Like, just kind of yeah. polish your essay. You don't want to turn in something sloppy. I would agree 100%. Things like commas, and it doesn't, it never has to be technically perfect. I right. Mean, often submit your essay when you're ready, when you think it's perfect. But things like extra spaces between sentences that like eat up those characters, especially on those long essays that yep. you're really trying to get under 5,000 characters. Um, just little things, like really try to perfect all those things before you submit your essay because otherwise, you know, I want to focus on your content and making that really packed a punch. Yeah, it can be, it's distracting. An, an essay with just a ton of, like, very simple grammatical mistakes is very distracting. Yeah. And while we're talking about it, for, for people who are listening who are thinking of submitting their essay, I would strongly encourage, if you don't feel comfortable with grammar or spelling or punctuation, um, an advanced revision where you send your essay in three times would probably be better for you because the first time or two, we can really focus on tuning up the content. And once you have it worded, once we think we've got the wording right, then we can get to the technical stuff. Yes. No, that helps. There's also, um, yeah. I think it's a plugin on like your browser, or your computer called Grammarly. Um, yeah. and I, I can link to that in the description, but like, that's also really helpful. It's, they have a paid version. I don't know what you get in the paid version, but it's a free version too, where it'll kind of spell check you more than just your normal spell check. And so something like that, like use tools, like use the tools available to you. If your school, if you're in classes and your school has a writing center, they may not be able to help you with the content very much, but they can help you with polishing that essay and making sure it looks nice and pretty. So good idea. I love that. Um, okay, it's my turn, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I only have one left. Okay. But this is one that I see a lot. And people who, not all applicants are like this, but some people have major setbacks just in their journey. They got a bad grade or they took time off school. And they tend to dwell on that in the body of their essay and focus everything on that. And the problem with that is it kind of leaves the reader with a bad taste in their mouth because we're focusing on something negative or something mm -hmm. that technically set you back. What I tell people to do to correct this is if you want to touch on setbacks, I think we both probably do this because it's the way my PA resource, um, it's what it's kind of what we preach, but to do it briefly in the conclusion instead, anything that you wanted to address, but then immediately focus on what it taught you, how it ultimately pushed you forward or taught you resilience or whatever it may be. I think that's the best way to go about it. But I hate to see an essay turned in that focuses so much on that when there's so much else I want to know. Right. Yeah. I, I think just we do that as people. Like, obviously, we focus on our flaws and our weaknesses. Um, but your essay is not the place to do that. And that's why I say in interviews, too. Like, you've got to focus on your strengths. You've got to... We're, you've got to brag on yourself, which we're really bad at. And so, yeah. I mean, you just have to, though. Like, and that's where this goes back to the being too specific versus not specific enough. Like, I would rather you be kind of general about, like, I struggled through chemistry, got to see, but these are the ways I improved. Like, keep that yeah. first part real brief, but tell me all the ways you've improved. Um, or tell me, you know, in my post back classes, I have a 4.0. Um, you know, something that gives you that kind of strength, something concrete that's really good versus, I mean, laying out all these things and you never want to make excuses. So even if you did have a time that you struggled, really try to own it. Like, don't yeah. put it on the teacher. Don't put it on an event. Um, you can explain what happened because things do happen. But ultimately, like, I want to see... I don't really care about that time you struggled as long as you feel ready for PA school and you've made improvements toward that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And especially when people dwell on it, it's kind of like, okay, well, you need to show me that you've kind of gotten past it. Like, prove to me that you have, you've had 4.0 in your post back classes. Um, and not only that, but like, it also shows that you're dedicated to pursuing it. You know, you yes. recognize that you've done something that maybe doesn't um, speak to your work ethic overall. So you have righted that and that shows that you want to pursue PA. Yes, I totally agree. Okay, you started, so I'll end. Let me pick one. Um, we kind of touched on not answering the prompts a little bit, but I'll go into detail with that a little bit more. So just keep in mind in your essay that the reason that the prompt is asking you why you want to be a PA. And so like, make sure when you get to the end of your essay that you can answer that question for your reader. And that's something I'll, I'll tend to say, like at the end of my edits, like either I can tell why you want to be a PA or I still can't really tell you, like I can't answer that question. Um, so that's something I want to see, but okay, yeah. this is, I'll look, uh -huh. I look at all of their reasons. Like I'll kind of keep a mental tally and be like, okay, can these also be applied to being an MD or DO or an NP? And people need to think about that. I need a reason that is totally indisputable as to why they want to go PA. Yes, exactly. Um, this is one that Brian and I talk about a lot, and that is not knowing the name of the profession that you are applying for. So this may be hard to explain over a podcast, but there's no apostrophe S on physician. So it's physician, assistant, not physician's assistant, like not an assistant yeah. belonging to the physician. Um, yeah. And so I, I see it a lot. And I Sometimes I'm like, was it autocorrect or do they really not know or I don't know. But yeah, that that could I don't I mean, to be perfectly honest, like I don't really care because I know what the name of my profession is, but you don't know who's reading your essay and that may be just like a trigger for them. So Yeah. Yeah, there are Facebook pages of PAs that oh, God. Work on it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it just drives some people nuts. What about when people submit an essay and physician assistant, the P and the A are capitalized? What do you, do you leave it like that or do you have them? I don't really have a preference as long as they're consistent. Personally, yeah. I don't think it needs to be capitalized, but like, I won't really, I won't usually change it. Yeah. Um, like it's fine, but yeah. I, I don't think it has to be capitalized. If it, if it has an apostrophe S on it though, I, I it. it's like red, like, I, I literally put in all caps red flag and then have like a whole paragraph about why that's not okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. I would totally if, you wanna, if you want to avoid the red flag paragraph, then don't do that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I hope everyone, I feel like everyone's going to be like, oh, my essay, I've got to go fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think I like it. Um, I, yeah, I really just, it's so funny because you and I get training on this and we yeah. do this all day, every day. So it seems so second nature to us. And it's, it's hard for me to remember sometimes that this is some, this is most people's first time writing a personal statement. Yes. And like it's hard, it's hard to get started. It's hard to keep it going, keep it flow, answer all of these things that we've been talking about. And especially conclusions, people will write conclusions that I just like, don't even know what they're saying. Or they don't have a conclusion and the essay yes. just ends. <laughs> Or they don't have a conclusion. And so I get it. But I think things like this, like if you had searched for this five years ago, this would be nowhere on the internet. Right. I remember looking at personal statement stuff um, when I was writing mine and there were like a couple blog posts where people just posted their personal statement and they're like, this is the best you can do. And I was like, what? What do I do with this? <laughs> yeah, that was when I was applying, there was like, there was nothing. That was 2000. Yeah. I applied in 2011 and like nothing. So, uh, nothing. not at all. But yeah, I have my personal statement up on the blog and reading through it, it was, like, it was good. It was okay. Like I thought it was decent. There are probably things I could have changed, but, um, yeah. I think it's a relatively good picture of me. So yeah, me too. I yeah. went back and read mine a couple months ago and I was like, I wish I could just it's not bad, it's decent, but all the same things apply. I wish I could just write, do a public video of me editing my own personal statement. Yeah, I thought about doing that too. I think it'd be cool. I'd probably be really like hard on myself though, so. 
Me yeah, Me and I think these are, are good tips and I'll link to, um, I think it's already in the description usually, but I'll link to my PA resource so everyone will yeah. know where to go to get their essays edited. Mm-hmm. And I know it's um, it's hard for some people to afford because I've, I've been there too, but I think in my bio on my Instagram, I think I have like a $10 off discount code. Maybe you have one too, but future PA um, does it is a discount. I don't know how much that is. So yours might be more. Yeah, Do you know? I'm not sure. Yeah, I can look it up. I'll link to your, your Instagram and everything. So anyway, yeah. I just hope it encourages people to approach their essay a little bit different, but yeah. then still utilize my PA resource because yeah. everybody needs a fresh set out. Yeah, no, that's what, and I don't, are you in the pre PA club on Facebook, our Facebook group? Yeah. Okay, yeah. like ever, it's so funny because right now everyone's been commenting. They're like, "Go get your essay edited." Like I thought my essay was good. It wasn't. <laughs> like, yeah. I hope I didn't edit your essay. I'm so sorry. Like their mom or their someone. Well, that's what, I was editing supplementals, and one one girl commented in there, and I had edited some of hers. And she said, she was like, I don't think my MyPA resource ones were harsh enough. And I was like, well, it could be that yours were really good. But I was like, I hope I wasn't too harsh. She was like, you were harsh but nice about it, or, but polite about it. And I was like, okay, great. What more could you want, though, when you're editing? Harsh but polite. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I'll take it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. This is super fun. I've been dying to do this. So. I know.